Good morning, KB friends. Um, today I will be reading from this book called Stories for Boys Who Dare to be Different. True Tales of Amazing Boys Who Change the World Without Killing Dragons by Ben Brooks. So the first story that I'll be reading is about a man named Patch Adams, born in 1945. Patch was bullied at school for being different and for standing up to the racism that he saw around him. Because of the bullying, he ended up in the hospital three times. On his third visit, when Patch was 18, he decided that after he got out, he'd start a revolution to, st to spread happiness. For a while, he found it difficult to be around people, so he set out to do experiments in friendliness. He would call random numbers on his phone and speak to the people on the other end until they become friends. He would start up conversations with strangers in the street, and he would ride elevators up as many floors as it took for the people inside to introduce themselves and start laughing together. Patch became a clown and a doctor. He started his own hospital called the Gessendit Institute, where his goal wasn't just to make his patients less sick, but to make them happier too. These days, he flies all over the world, giving talks and performances as a clown and as a doctor. Patch doesn't think the two jobs have to be separate. To him, laughter is one of the best medicines it can get the blood flowing, strengthen your heart, and even help your body fight off diseases. If you want to help make the world a better place, Patch has some suggestions. Be silly in public. Wear funny clothes. Be friendly to everyone you meet. And pick up all the garbage that you see in your town. Anyone can do something, he says. It's about deciding to do it to dive into work for peace and justice and care for everybody on the planet. The next story I'm going to read is about a man named Trevor Noah, born in 1984. Trevor, Trevor says he was born a crime. His dad is white, his mom is black, and he comes from South Africa, where any mixing between the two was illegal. When his mom was caught in his dad's building, she was put in jail. If they were outside together, his mom wasn't allowed to hold his dad's hand, and his dad would have to walk on the other side of the road. So Trevor was raised by his grandmother and his mother until his mom married a violent man who terrified Trevor and once shot his mom in the head. Somehow, she survived, and she continued looking after Trevor as best she could. School was hard, too, because he felt like he couldn't fit in with the white kids or the black kids. Trevor also suffered from a lot of painful spots and had to take medicine to get them under control, which had side effects, like making him tired and unhappy. His family was so poor, they would eat worms. To start the car, they'd roll it down the hill to save petrol. To make money, he played DJ sets in the streets with his friends. As he grew up, Trevor decided to make use of everything he'd been through. He wanted to put his experiences into comedy. Even when he talked about the saddest, most difficult times of his life, he managed to find the funny side. And he took his comedy all over South Africa, sharing his pain and laughter with strangers. Trevor's since moved to America. He hosts the biggest American comedy news show and is, famous, and is a famous stand-up comedian. He says he owes it all to his mom's determination that he would get out of poverty. In my world, he said, a woman was the most powerful thing that I knew and still is. Next, I'm going to read about a man named Barack Obama, born in 1961. A lot of people said that the United States of America would never have a black president. But all of those people were wrong. In 1961, Barack Obama was, was born in Honolulu, 
an American island in the Pacific Ocean. He was six when he moved to Indonesia, a place where people ate snakes and grasshoppers and the kids battled with kites in the street. Some years, there was no rain and people went hungry. Other years, there was so much rain that it rushed along the roads and rivers. It was, it was a difficult place to live and eventually Barack was sent back to America. He grew up, married a woman named Michelle and had two daughters, Sasha and Malia. But his country wasn't doing as well. The American economy was in trouble, which meant people were poorer than they'd been in a long time and there weren't enough jobs to go around. Americans wanted change. Wanting to help, Barack ran for president. Despite hundreds of years of racism, despite racist attacks from competitors, and despite it having been only 50 years since black people were allowed to vote, the American people elected Barack as president. He didn't seem like any president, president that ha had come before him. He collected Spider-Man comics and played basketball and even danced on TV shows. He also created millions of new jobs, helped poorer people get medicine, ended two wars, and made it illegal to treat gay people or women differently than anyone else. And he did all that while raising his daughters alongside his wife. For Malia and Sasha, he was just trying to help create a world where everyone had a chance to be whoever they wanted to be. That's what 21st century feminism is all about, he said. The, the idea that when everyone is equal, we are all more free. And lastly, I'm going to read about Rick Van Beek. Rick's daughter, Maddie, was two months old when she was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. It would mean that she couldn't control her muscles and would have trouble with learning and thinking. Even though Maddie couldn't talk, it had always been obvious to Rick that she loved being outside. She loved the breeze and the trees and the water. It was made especially clear when a friend pulled Maddie along in a cart during a marathon. Rick could see how happy she was. He decided to make a change. The next day, Rick quit smoking and started exercising. When Maddie was 13, he completed a triathlon with her. In a triath triathlon, the first leg is swimming, the second is biking, and the third is running. Rick towed Maddie in a canoe for the swimming, pulled her behind him in a trailer for the biking, and carried her in his arms for the run. Crowds were cheering for them every step of the way. As they crossed the finish line, everyone went wild. People tell Rick he's inspiring, but he tells them it's all Maddie. She's the one who inspired him. Together, they make up Team Maddie, and they've since completed all kinds of different races, raising money for charity along the way. How does he do it? She's my heart, and I'm her legs, Rick says. The end.